Has OnePlus said, no, we haven't. You have my word on that. This is interesting. I mean, this is what Pete Lau has said about the new OnePlus 11. So is this phone like the big comeback of OnePlus? Now, I will answer that question, but let's roll back a few years. What made OnePlus phones great back in the day? So the specs were always the latest, but what really made them great are the two important factors. Clean experience, value for money. Now, to justify the hype for OnePlus 11 to be a great phone, these two things need to come together. First, let's check out the clean experience. So first of all, the OnePlus 11 has the latest Android update, Oxygen OS 13 based on Android 13. They've also promised four major OS updates for this phone along with five years of security patches. This is actually awesome because this is on par with Samsung and even better than Google. As for the experience, this is basically Color OS 13, but there are no bloatware apps, no glance lock screen, no ads, nothing. It's a clean experience. The other big factor is value for money. So I'll start with the price. The OnePlus 11 is rumored to be priced around 5499 and OnePlus seems very confident about this phone. So I'm guessing the price is correct. Otherwise, I'll have to eat my words. Now, if I look at the overall phone, it's got the premium look one expects from a OnePlus flagship phone with the whole matte finish on the back that looks and feels great. The metal frame, the slightly curved display and the fact that this has the alert slider, which is placed a little higher than usual, but it's fine. And one thing I noticed is the haptics are great on this phone, be it while using the alert slider or even when decreasing or increasing volume. Now, the USB-C port is still USB 2.0 and it does miss out on all the pro features, be it wireless charging or IP68, water and dust resistance, but there are no compromises anywhere else. I mean, the buttons are very tactile. The in-screen fingerprint scanner is really fast and in the right position. The dual speakers are loud with very good quality and separation. Now, I know this camera module is kind of divisive. Some people are okay with it. Some absolutely hate it and some like it for its sparkle effect and the Hasselblad branding. I also like that the camera bump is not too big, so I can place it on a surface and use it and it doesn't really wobble, so it's all good. There are also no compromises in terms of display. I mean, the non-pro OnePlus flagships in the past used to come with FHD displays, while the OnePlus 11 here comes with a more flagship grade pan. Just look at the specs, 2K resolution, 120Hz refresh rate with LTPO 3 tech, 10-bit colors, Dolby Vision support, Gorilla Glass Victus, and it's actually top of the line. It's beautiful to look with vibrant colors and movies and shows look great on the screen. There is Dolby Vision support, like I said, but I did not see the tag in Netflix's playback specs. Apart from this, it's also super smooth to use. The outdoor visibility is great. And this is what OnePlus calls a nature tone display, which basically automatically changes the color temperature of the screen depending on the ambient light and it works well. Also, I mentioned it's a slightly curved screen, right? But I did not face any accidental touches. The OnePlus 11 also has the latest specs, obviously the new powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with LPDDR5X RAM, UFS 4.0 storage. Now, one thing I'm not a fan of is that the 128GB variant of the OnePlus 11, which I think most people will be buying, has UFS 3.1 storage, just like what Samsung has done with the S23. Now, it just seems like a weird cost cutting because UFS 4.0 brings a huge difference in speeds. That apart, the phone obviously scores high in terms of benchmarks and the CPU throttling tests are kind of mixed. I mean, I ran the CPU throttling test a number of times and sometimes the phone does okay, but a lot of times the phone does throttle, which is strange because the IQ11 with the same specs did not throttle in any of our tests. So it's probably not 8 Gen 2's problem, it's more a problem with optimization. Anyway, the phone runs super smooth in day-to-day -day usage and gaming is great too. We have been testing a lot of games on this phone, be it COD Mobile, Asphalt or even Apex Legends, which RIP. But the gaming performance was very good with no heating issues or lag due to throttling. The truth is, if the phone does have throttling issues, it does not show up when using it, at least so far. Now, one thing that actually surprised me in the OnePlus 11 is the Hasselblad branded cameras. There's the new 50 megapixel Sony IMX890 sensor with OIS, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 32 megapixel telephoto lens with 2x optical zoom. Now, these are Hasselblad branded cameras, so you do get different Hasselblad styles in the ported mode, these cool Hasselblad filters in the photo mode, the Hasselblad Pro mode, and there's the new long exposure mode with a lot of cool options. These features apart, the cameras take really good photos. The main camera produces very natural shots, be it in daytime or low light. And the photos are very rich colors, as you can see in this plant. There's also plenty of detail and good dynamic range. I mean, you can see how well it has captured the people in the frame along with the background. The low light shots are also bright and sharp and just very well exposed. In fact, we even took a few comparison shots versus the Pixel 7. And the interesting thing is both the cameras come fairly close. Sometimes the Pixel 7 is obviously better, but sometimes the OnePlus 11 is better at handling the background and the foreground. Now, I'm still comparing the cameras on this phone, so let me know if you want a dedicated camera comparison of the OnePlus 11 versus Pixel 7. Anyway, the 48 megapixel ultra wide camera is also pretty good at preserving the details and the colors on the main camera. And the zoom lens is also pretty good as 2x photos are sharp and ported mode shots in 2x are also very good. But yeah, 3x optical zoom would have been better. 
when it comes to videos there's 8k 24 fps support and when i took videos in 4k because that's what people will be doing mostly i noticed that the stability is good the focusing is also fast and the quality is pretty good too the front camera is the usual 16 megapixel sensor which does do a good job but it's strange that it's stuck to 1080p even in 2023 Moving on, the battery is a 5000 mAh one and there's 100 watt Superbook charging. Not the fastest, but still very fast. I mean, it charges the phone to 50% in around 10 minutes and to 100% in just around 26, 27 minutes. As for the battery, you should get a screen on time of around six hours, which I think is very good. Apart from all this, the phone has 12 5G bands, including all the Indian 5G bands. There's Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3, and there's NFC support. So the big question is, is the OnePlus 11 OnePlus's big comeback? But in the last few years, this is what we have said about OnePlus phones. Something is missing. This can't be OnePlus. I am confused. A false promise. And now the OnePlus 11 is here. And big comeback. But this is a good phone because cleaner software, longer updates and value for money if the price rumored is correct. Look, I feel 2023 is not going to be good for smartphones in general, but I really hope OnePlus surprises us.